What's up everybody, welcome to the Guna channel and the question I have for you is with two games to go, is there any way that we can lift the Premier League trophy for the first time in 20 years? After such an exciting season last season where we came out of nowhere to challenge at the top of the table for most of the season, by this point of the season last year it was already all over, we'd fallen apart. This year we've paced ourselves much better not quite getting off to the dynamic electric start we were all hoping for after a reasonable summer transfer window. No, be, let's be honest, it was a great summer transfer window. We signed Declan Rice, we signed Kai Havertz, who, even though none of us knew it at the time, was going to be one of our most exciting players towards the end of the season. We signed David Rea, who a lot of people were unsure about, but he's just managed to secure himself the Golden Gloves. And we signed Urien Timber, who actually was one of the more exciting signings and looked really good pre-season. And then we got hit with that really tough injury to him in the first game of the Premier League. And it's unlikely that he is going to feature in both of the last two games. So a good summer transfer window, kind of, when you look at a good summer transfer window, three of the four players making a really big impact and the fourth injured. So you have to take your hat off to them for the transfers. And we have improved since last season, there's no doubt about it. In fact, actually, when you look at it, this season, you have to be proud of it. In all of the last 31 Premier League seasons, the average winning points margin, the average number of points a team has won the league by has been 87. So, with us on 83, if we finish both of our last two games strongly and win against Manchester United and win at home to Everton, then we will finish on 89 points. We will, if we win both of those games, have scored more goals than we've ever scored in the Premier League before. We will have won more games than the Invincible team, but can we win the league? Of course, the question here is not how we do, but it's how Manchester City do. They take on Fulham away in the 12.30 kickoff on Saturday. And I really want to tell myself that there's hope here. I really want to tell myself that a Fulham team don't really have a lot to play for, can really turn up like they have done many times this season already. God knows they beat us comfortably enough when we went there. And the difference is, of course, we were jaded and not in any kind of form. Manchester City have Erling Haaland scoring again, a fully fit team, and nothing really to distract them except the FA Cup against their arch rivals. Although, I think if you ask most City fans, as much as they hate Manchester United, I'm not sure they really see Man United as their arch rivals anymore. I don't think anyone does. I don't think Palace do. So, can Fulham deliver a result against Manchester City? I think it's our only hope. Honestly, I think it's our only hope because after that, in the midweek game, they travel to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And although it is one of the best stadiums in the world and Tottenham fans have been writing letters to Enoch to ask them to throw the match, I think that's probably the biggest waste of paper I can imagine because it's probably the biggest waste of words there is, isn't it? I mean, asking a team that has shipped 13 goals in the last four games that has only managed to concede four and both of those and all four of those were scored after they were already three and four nil down and mostly gifted as well this is a team that's just such bad disarray I don't think if their lives depended on it they could get anything but a shellacking off Manchester City and with David Moyes now being announced as on his way out of the West Ham job, I understand Lopetegui is being considered the replacement, which I do think is a weird one. But, you know, far be it from me to say David Moyes, having delivered silverware to West Ham fans, still not quite the man they see taking him forward. And I think I can understand that. But West Ham have had a good season. And the last day of the season is always a little bit... Well, you never really quite know what to expect. After all, West, uh, after all, Manchester City were 2-0 down to Aston Villa a couple of years ago when they came back and won it. So looking at it, do I think Fulham will get anything against Manchester City? Well, do you? Let me know in the comments. Is there any chance here? Am I missing something? Do I think that Tottenham Hotspur, even though it is a bogey ground for Manchester City, they have 
never won at uh, Spurs home stadium, which is weird, really, when you think about it. But this is not that Spurs team. And for all the people talking about have they progressed under Big Ange Postacoglu, no, I don't think they have. People will tell you that they've done better in terms of points, but that's comparing them to last season. And last season they had Stellini as a caretaker manager and Ryan Mason. So really, yeah, I mean, he's done better than a... And Antonio Conte, who'd had a meltdown, hated the club and wasn't there for a large portion of the time before he had the meltdown. Essentially, he has steered them to slightly better than the rudderless ship they were last season. And Manchester City are going to walk all over them, aren't they? Let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong about that. And then finally, their home game against West Ham. That's a, that's a three-pointer. So the reality is... Manchester City are likely to take nine points from the remaining three games that they have to play. We have one point advantage and only six more points to gain. So seven points plays nine points. They will go above us. Nothing we can do. And, and I'm sure there will be lots of Arsenal fans who blame Arteta. And I think we're looking at a summer of... And it's going to be disappointing not to win. It's going to be disappointing to be playing, you know, to be watching a team that has this calendar year potentially could go all the way to 15 out of 17 matches, drawing only one and losing only one and still not win the Premier League. I mean, that's as near perfect a record as you can see that we could be watching in any other season, in any other era, this Arsenal team would be champions. And yet they will be remembered as nearly men. I do hope, I do think, though, that we've seen the end to this bottling uh, label because no one's talking about Liverpool as bottlers. And I think that's fair. I think they did enormously well this season to get as far as they did. You have to remember that Jurgen Klopp had totally transformed that midfield. These were players that hadn't played together. I said this a while ago when everyone was saying, oh, Liverpool know what it's like to win the title. Three or four of their players do, but most of them don't. And Manchester City aren't as good as they were last season. And they aren't as good as they were the season before. There is a decline there, but they haven't declined far enough for us to overtake them yet. They are and will likely for some time be the best team the Premier League has seen. There's reasons to be optimistic as Arsenal fans. We have a young squad and this summer transfer window could be really exciting. Although I'm refraining from talking about transfers until the very end of the season, just because, you know, there's enough time to talk about transfers. But for us, the last two games, is there a chance? Is there a chance that we could go to Manchester United and not take all three points? It is a... It is a it is a place that's been tough for us to go to. Even last year when we played much better than Man United, they still beat us 3-1. We were a bit more defensively naive, a lot more gung-ho, didn't necessarily defend well enough. Well, obviously, if you lose 3-1, you weren't defending well enough. Although, try telling that to somebody like Ange Postacoglu, who still thinks his team's playing brilliantly when they're 4-0 down. Um, or try telling that to Eric Ten Hag, who, to me... Looks like a man who's accidentally hit his head into a brick wall at about 50 miles an hour and is being asked questions after the event. It just doesn't feel like there's anyone there anymore. He's been sacked, um, although they're not going to announce it until after the FA Cup final, which I think is sensible. Um, only Tottenham are stupid enough to sack a manager just before a cup final. But... This Manchester United team, I watched them play against Crystal Palace yesterday and I've never seen anything like it. It reminds me... Well, not, not, I've never seen a Manchester United side this bad. I mean, I'm going back to the Ron Atkinson era where they started 1984 really brightly. I think they won the first 10 games, correct me if I'm wrong, but then it fell away and it was a few years before Fergie came in and... It's worth remembering just how long Fergie got to win his first Premier League title. Something that I'd like anyone who's waiting to come up with the Arteta out. Just remember that, that sometimes it does take a while to build a team that's good enough to dominate. Not just for one year or two years. Pep Guardiola still hasn't signed a contract extension. I think overall, when I think about us going... Uh, when I think about us going to Manchester United, of course, on the one hand, you feel like you know it could be a draw, 
the stress and attention could get to us. The dream scenario, of course, is that Fulham do somehow get a draw against Manchester City or something mad happens. You know, for once, maybe Man City, the wrong end of a VAR decision or two. And if that happens and we go to Manchester and we fluff our lines and only get a draw, it'll be devastating. And I'm dreading that. But if, if the unthinkable does happen and Fulham are able to somehow stop Man City getting all three points... We have to fancy ourselves against this Manchester United side. Well, Johnny Evans was really unlucky to have to be drafted into that back line. And Casemiro is... I think Jamie Carragher summed it up when you have to get out of football before football gets out of your son. I think Casemiro... I don't know. Um, I, I certainly don't think we'd struggle to score against their back four. I thought Juan Bissaka going back to Palace at least looked half decent... But there's nothing there, is there? There's no ambition, there's no hope. And they're literally just... This is the worst Premier League uh, campaign Manchester United have ever had. This is the worst side they've ever had. And um, I'm talking... And and so we, we do expect to go there. And on the final day of the season, look, if all goes as I would expect it to... Um, then on the final game of the season, we need West Ham to go to the Etihad and win or get a draw. I think we're all going to know that the final game of the season is going to be much more, much less dramatic than we're hoping for. Um, but all of that said, I want to hear from you. Am I missing something? Are you confident? Do you think we can do it? Is this going to be the year? And after that, there'll be plenty of time to dissect this season. I'm not going to do it here. But... I do hope that we can, as a fan base, appreciate what we've been given, which is that we are, for the last two seasons, the only team outside of Manchester City, the only team that has come anywhere near on dethroning the best Premier League team that's ever been seen assembled. So I'm looking for you to give me something to be positive about. Put your positive comments in there. Maybe we can manifest this. Maybe we can make this happen by sheer force of will. Maybe I'm being too negative. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I'm part of the problem. I hope not. <laughs> I would dearly, dearly love to be at a parade and watch Odegaard and Declan Rice and Pakaio Saka on an open top bus. I'm going to dream until it's impossible. But let me know in the comments what you think is going to happen and how you feel about this season. And until I see you again, be lucky. Lots of love.